certainly must be one of those exceptional and beautiful coincidences that on this, the first full day of our pilgrimage journey in this holy place dedicated to the honour of the Mother of God, our Blessed Mother, that we should honour her mother, the Father, Saints Anne and Joachim, parents of the Blessed Mother, and with the great privilege of being grandparents of this, the Lord's Saviour. A great coincidence for all of us this day. This day of two whose lives were so, are so intimately inter intertwined with the life of Mary and by direct implication, therefore, with the life of our Saviour. Indeed, a pilgrimage journey, and we've all had experiences of them in the past, is all about relationship. Indeed, our own relationship with Christ Jesus and by being here in this holy place dedicated to the Blessed Mother on this holy day, we're asking the saints' intercession. That's why I thought the opening hymn was so appropriate for us today, that the great saints would help us, and there is none greater than, than Mary, would help us in our journey of life to be faithful and intentional disciples of Christ Jesus, particularly as the world attempts to shut down the message of the gospel. We don't know very much about the parents of the Blessed Mother, Saint, Saint Anne, to Joachim, we have, well, I was going to say we have two sources, but this morning after Steve's talk on St. Joseph, he made it a lot easier for me because then I don't have to re repeat to you what it would like, would be like for a Jewish couple or a Jewish family in the first century living in, in, in Palestine under the rule of the Romans, the pagan Romans. They, like all of their fellow countrymen, waited in hope waited in hope for the coming of the Messiah. And they lived their daily lives with that hope, preparing for that great momentous moment when God would finally, in their eyes, fulfill the promises that he had made to, them, to his chosen people. So we can take all of that information that Steve so beautifully shared with us this morning in relation to St. Joseph, their son-in-law, and we can import it into the homily today as we are reminded of that, of what it was like to live in the ups and downs, without running water, with no cell phones. I think that would be a great blessing, wouldn't it? <laughs> so we can, we, can, we, can, we can reflect on some of that and ponder on that. And then we have that, it's complemented by other information that is given to us. Indeed, it's not in scripture itself. In the, in the words of the Bible that we find their names or any details about them. Instead, we find them in two great books that don't belong to the canon of Scripture, the Proto-Evangelion of James and the Gospel of the Nativity of Mary. Now, that word gospel is not, not to be understood in the words of gospel, the Gospels of, of, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are both two non-canonical sources that were written later in the second century. But according to those sources, Anne was born in Bethlehem. You see all the connections, family connections that are there. That she married Joachim, and at first they seemed to be unable to have children. But they took them to prayer and to fasting. They promised that if they were to be given a child, that they would dedicate that child to the Lord's service. And boy, did they fulfill that promise. It's very soon afterwards we're told that in the, in the, the, the Gospel of the Nativity of Mary, that they welcomed the birth of their daughter. And boy, as I said, did she spend her life dedicated to the Lord in the service in that unique way as mother of the Savior, the Blessed One to all generations, who has always sought to stay close to her people. Steve and I were talking on the way up as we were coming here today about the, 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 the fact that she decided to appear here in this, well, it's out of the way, isn't it, at least? say that about it. It's one of those places, but isn't that always the way? You know, Steve and I were in Fatima and Lourdes, they at those times were out of the way places. I come from Ireland and we have a, had a Marian apparition in Knock, again, a very much out of the way places, where people that live their lives often from hand to mouth, but with a deep sense of faith and a desire to be faithful, intentional disciples of the Lord Jesus. A very simple life, but in that simplicity, there's a richness that sometimes we who are a little more sophisticated and materialistic often can lose sight of. I often wonder about Joachim and Anne. Did they live to see the birth of the Savior? 
we don't know. But I like to think of that in my mind, of them playing with him, of Joachim taking him for walks. Steve shared some of that with, with Joseph. Well, how many of you are grandfathers or grandparents? Several of you are. So that great joy of holding your, your grandchild in your arms for the first time, of them looking up to you and choosing a name. I wonder by what name did, did Jesus refer to St. Anne and to, and, and to St. Joachim? How did Mary refer to her mother and father? Indeed, Joseph to his parents when he was telling the story, passing on the little faith telling the story of his life and the story of, of the people of Israel as we heard in the first reading of, from the book of Sirach. You know, the Jews have a great, great capacity to tell the story of God's fidelity and indeed an honesty as well to tell the story of their infidelity for the second and the third and the fourth chances and on and on where God remains ever faithful to them. And they seek then to respond and to renew. I think one of the great joys of celebrating a feast day like this is that I'm a great, I'm a great believer in the power of the intercession of the saints. But I think it is today is, is, is especially poignant because it refers and reflects on the importance of family. Now, I think we can all agree that the family is under attack here in our modern world at the moment. The concept of family, you know, and that has been intensified in a way for. for particularly in the light of the COVID pandemic, where we tend, tended to separate ourselves from one another. You know, we didn't see each other because we were, because we allowed fear to be, to be the controlling factor. But family is so important. Now, God could have chosen to redeem us in any way he thought appropriate or possible. But he chose to become one with us in the flesh. And Jesus Christ, you know, sometimes when we depict the Holy Family, yes, it is appropriate that we depict Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But remember that there is a bigger web of relationships out there that is part of the family. And there's a richness in that treasure that sometimes we forget about. I don't know how you were brought up, but I was brought up with, with the joy of lots of cousins, aunts and uncles, extended family, grandparents in the early years. And so Jesus Christ, by being born into a very similar family, has hallowed all families, all families, and made them special in the eyes of God. And those of you who are grandparents who put up your hands, you too have a special role in, in, in the lives of, of your grandchildren. A special role in handing on the faith, of making sure that, that the next generation doesn't lose sight of the holiness and the uniqueness of family life. That's an important part. And today is a great celebration, particularly for grandparents, as I said, but indeed for all the old church. I am an uncle, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm an uncle to 14 of, of my siblings and children. And so I try to play a part in their lives to the best of my ability, even though I'm across the sea from them. But still, I know that they want to know who I am. And they want to hear the story. So tell the story of your lives. I like to think of Joachim and Anne, maybe even babysitting for Jesus. And as Mary and Joseph went off for an evening, for an evening walk and left the child with, the, with them. And maybe he was a little scoundrel running around and running them ragged. I think those are beautiful images to call to mind as we reflect on this great feast day. God has hallowed family. He has made marriage and family life a sacred way. It's a way in which the vast majority of people work out their salvation with, with, with wonder and awe and a little trembling about the gift that God has given to each and every one of us. So we, we pray today in, through the intercessions of St. Joachim and Anne for all families. That would be the intention that I will take to the altar today. For all of your families, our families, here that have, have enriched our lives and continue to enrich our lives. And in a particular way, let us remember those who, for whom faith is no longer important, who have disconnected themselves from the community, from the family of faith. They need that guidance and that inspiration, and they need that wisdom that can come through our prayers and the witness of our lives. 
They need to hear that they are always welcome. They never cease being our brothers and sisters, our cousins, our aunts and uncles, and they never cease being part of the body of Christ, the church. They just have to be reignited and reattached to that reality. So let us pray for them today through the intercession of the great saints, the Blessed Mother, who appeared in this holy place, again with a message of teaching, of sharing, helping Adele and those who, who experienced her love and her presence so that they would understand that they, they need to, needed to grow in their faith. You know, I'm almost, I've almost just celebrated 20 years of priesthood and I'm still learning what it is to be a priest. I'm still learning what it is to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. That task never ends and I hope that it never ends till I take my final breath and I behold the beatific vision. And I pray that that's the truth for each and every one of you. No matter how old you might be, young people, in the back. The Lord is calling you into that deeper relationship with Him. But He never calls us alone. He always calls us as part of a community of faith. He first called the, the Abraham and his family, then the chosen people, and in Christ Jesus He calls all of us who are the mystical body of Christ, the Church. It is easier and better when we journey together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We are less vulnerable to the temptations of this world. We are stronger and better together when we are united in Jesus Christ. And we remember today the great saints who have gone before us and who have given us an example of their dedication, their witness, and their fidelity to Christ Jesus. And I'm sure each and every one of you here has your own particular saint that you have that special devotion to. Look and see where was their strength that is so attractive to you. I hope it is attractive to you. Look and see what, is, what it is that unites you with them and makes them attractive to you and they to you. That's part of what it is to be family and to be part of the great community of faith. So we give thanks for the gift of family. We give thanks for the grace and the strength that we receive from the saints so that we would become intentional, faithful disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.